Today we're going to look at the ratio of the areas of two triangles. And there's three different relationships. The first two we'll discuss and go over an example for, but the focus will be on the third one, which I'll highlight as number three, as well as um, C down below here. So if you can take a moment, hit pause and read the box where it says comparing areas of triangles, and then we'll move on to setting up an example for those three scenarios. Now that you've read through the first three, for number one, we're going to take a look at problem A. In problem A, you see two triangles, one of which I'm going to highlight as yellow. So that's Roman numeral one, and then the second triangle in pink. Both triangles, if I were to drop an altitude down from the vertex on top, we would see that the height for triangle one and triangle two are the same. The base is different. The yellow triangle's base is eight versus the triangle in pink, its base is three. So if I were to make a comparison, a comparison is a ratio of the area of the first triangle to the area of the second triangle. The area formula is one half base times height. So in this case, one half, um, let's call it base one times height, which is the same in both triangles, compared to one half base two, and then height is the same for both triangles. Since the bases are different values, we'll leave that alone, but the ratio that we come up with, you have common factors on top and bottom of one half, and h, which we can uh, divide out and get one, the ratio we're left with would be base one to base two, and that would be equivalent to the ratio of the areas to each other. So we see that if the height is the same of two triangles, the ratio of the areas would be equal to the ratio of the bases. In this case, it would be eight to three is true for both ratios of the area and ratio of the base. And again, that's if the height is the same. Now, if we take a look at scenario two, you see that in, in the two triangles that you have, the yellow triangle is the one on top, that has a height of nine, and then the pink triangle below has a height of five. Both of those triangles have the same base, and we'll call that base that I just highlighted in blue. Let's highlight that in blue or trace that in blue, and we'll call that base B. This time, when I make a comparison of A1 to A2, the area of the yellow triangle would be one half base times, and we'll call it height one. So the heights this time are different. One half times base and then height two of the second triangle, the pink triangle on the bottom. So once again, the one half are reduced, the Bs are reduced, those factors are reduced. And what we find is that the ratio of the areas, if the bases are the same, is the same as the ratio of the different heights. And in this case, the top height, the height of the yellow triangle is nine. The height of the bottom triangle is five. So both the ratio of the areas and the ratio of the heights are equal, equivalent to nine to five. Now C is going to be the focus of our lesson today. For C, we have similar triangles, one and two. You'll notice that in the similar triangles one and two, that the area of the area of the first triangle to the area of the second tri triangle will have a specific scale factor tied to the ratio of the sides, which we call the scale factor of the sides. So let's first come up with the scale factor of the sides. One, we know these triangles are similar because vertical angles are congruent, along with the fact that you have parallel lines which would then mean these alternate interior angles are congruent. So these two triangles are similar by angle-angle postulate. So if we were to come up with first what the scale factor of these triangles are, the scale factor is a ratio of the sides, so three to six. So small to big, three to six, which reduces to one half. Now, if I wanted to come up with the ratio of the areas of these two triangles, without necessarily knowing what the actual area is or what the actual height of uh, the two triangles are, I can simply square the scale factor. So in this case, if I wanted the ratio of the area of triangle one to triangle two, 
I would take the scale factor that I just determined and square it that out. And by squaring, we were, we're going to distribute the square to both the top and the bottom to get one fourth. Now down below here, we're going to do an application of that particular observation. So on number two, we'll take, it, we'll take note that in two, we have a series of figures and I will highlight the triangles so that we can um, distinguish between the two. But you can see triangle X, Y, Z here in pink, and I'll highlight that, is being compared to triangle X, P, Q, which I'll trace out because they're nested within each other. Those two triangles happen to be similar triangles where we have parallel lines, so things like the, cor the corresponding angles are congruent. We have reflexive property where the angles overlap, so they're congruent to each other. So these two tri triangles we know are similar to each other. So for part A, they are asking us to find the ratio of the areas. So what we have to do is come up with what the scale factor of the side is. So the scale factors of the sides are, if I trace out the pink, it's five to the corresponding side of the yellow triangle, which is the sum of five and two, seven. So five to seven is the scale factor. Therefore, if I'm trying to find the scale factor of the, or the ratio of the areas, I would square my scale factor. Think of sc scale factor as a, a single unit of measure, whereas area is measured in square units. So in this case, if I square, 5 over 7, I get 25 over 49. That's for A. For B, I'm going to erase what I have right now for the triangles. And they're re referencing this time triangle XAB, which I'll highlight in yellow. Triangle XAB being compared to triangle XYZ. So this time the pink triangle and the yellow triangle is the larger triangle. So if we wanted to come up with the ratio of the areas, we need the scale factor of the sides. So let's go ahead and for B, and I'll label this bottom one A, for B we'll come up with the scale factor of the sides. Let's compare five to the entire length down below there, which is nine. So five to nine, scale factor determined first, five to nine. That's a single unit of measure. So when we come up with the ratio of areas, we're going to square that scale factor. So that would be five to nine squared, which is equivalent to 25 over 81. Now on our next page, which is the beginning of your homework assignment, I'm going to have you guys for your homework tonight Go ahead and complete the table down below here and 13 through 19. So your homework's going to begin down here. Before you do your homework, we're going to go ahead and discuss uh, perimeters and areas. So if perimeter is the sum of all of the lengths of the sides of a figure, we're going to go ahead and assume that if it's a single unit of measure, that if we're measuring, let's say, the base by uh, feet, that the perimeter, if we're summing up all of the side lengths, would also be measured in feet, whereas the area would be measured in square units. So things that have the same unit of measure, such as um, diameter, radius, base, height, those are all going to have the same um, ratio as the ratio of the size, which is our scale factor. So ratio of perimeter is the scale factor, same as ratio of base. So again, think single unit of measure. Think radius. Think per, uh, perimeter is there. Circumference is the perimeter of a circle. Think diameter. All those are using a single unit of measure like feet, like meters. Whereas when we compare the ratio of the areas, that, that's square units. So we're going to square the scale factor. So I'll highlight the square part. So you're going to square the numerator and the denominator of your scale factor. And so in on this one, I'm going to put scale factor squared. 
So let's go ahead and come down to number 11, which I'm going to do with you guys. 36 to 1. This is this particular table of values for number 11 provides you with the ratio of the areas being 36 to 1. So for number 11, if you're given that the scale factor squared is 36 to 1, we're going to work backwards and undo squaring. And we do that by taking the square root. So if we do that, we get this regular scale factor is 6 to 1. So when we're measuring perimeters, this is this is a single unit of measure, so its ratio would, would be 6 to 1. And the scale factor would be the same as the scale ratio of the perimeter, so 6 to 1. Only the area is going to be squared. Okay, and so as you go through the problems, just consider is this a single unit of measure or is this a, um, a double unit of measure? We'll do 16 as the last problem. The area of two circles are 25 pi and 100 pi. What's the ratio of the diameters? So we're going to uh, circle diameters. What is the ratio of the circumference is part B. Both of these are a single unit of measure. So they should have the same ratio as that of the scale factor. So let's come up with the scale factor first. So we know that scale factor squared is equal to the ratio of the areas. So 25 pi to 100 pi. We put one over the other. The pi's reduce. 25 over 100 reduces to 1 fourth. So if we're solving for just a single unit of measure, we're going to take the square root of our scale factor squared to get scale factor is square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2. So 1 to 2 would be the answers to both A and to B, which are measured in a single unit of measure.